Hello everyone, this is Ben and today we're looking at an IELTS Test 2 essay. The question is, nowadays some consumers are less influenced by advertising. What are the reasons for this? Is it a positive or negative development? So before I look at this and then give it some scores at the end, perhaps you could read it first on your own and think about which scores you would give it. This is the introductory paragraph. If you want to pause the video, this is the first body paragraph. This is the second body paragraph. And there is no conclusion. So this is the final slide. And to think about which scores you would give it, just take a look at the, uh, the writing band descriptors for test two, which are freely available online. It's the public version and you are the public. So you can find these with a quick Google search. Okay, so let's take a look. So there are several reasons why some consumers are less influenced by advertising. Um, a little bit repetitive. why society as a whole is less influenced by advertising. And it's a change that's continuously happening. So society is gradually becoming less influenced by advertising. Um, the next part, I mean, you can see that it's not really acceptable style is it here are a few possible explanations and then doing a numbered list like it's um, a report rather than an academic essay um it's a little bit hard to write an introduction for this because as i mentioned no conclusion is really given. We'll talk about that later. But to give you an idea of what would be more acceptable style, uh, there are several reasons why society is gradually becoming less influenced by advertising. I'll just make it part of the same sentence. So comma. Reasons related to broad societal changes. I'm going to keep it very general because you go into the details in the, uh, the body paragraphs. Broad societal changes in the ways in which, in the ways that we are exposed to advertisements via various media and react to them. Exposed to because of this and this and react to them because of this. So I have to say in, me, in my introduction, basically what I'm going to argue. Um, or if you like, I have to make an argument very generally in the introduction that I'm going to support with greater detail in the following paragraphs and react to advertisements. Is it a positive or negative development? Well, I've got to briefly say it. I'm going to say overall I believe that this is a positive development. Sorry for my messy writing, typical teachers writing a positive development for consumers and a negative one. For, uh, for advertisers, for the advertising industry, 
for the business world, maybe? Let's say the advertising industry. And because I added societal here, I think I will remove the previous use of the word society, just change it to people are. becoming gradually less influenced by advertising. Now, why do I focus on the advertising industry and how good it is for them? Well, I'll tell you, because in the final paragraph, the writer talks about the trend of consumers being influenced, but actually just talks about the effects on companies. Negative for companies. It forces companies to find more creative and authentic ways. So that was a bit interesting, I guess. It was unexpected when the question asks, is it a positive or negative development? It doesn't really say for consumers, but because we've mentioned consumers previously, it does seem like that's the implication. But okay, if it doesn't mention consumers, you can talk about uh, the business world and uh, the company selling the products and the advertising agencies, you know, the advertising industry. But again, you have to be very clear about what you're arguing. And actually, the writer doesn't really say that it's a positive or negative development for consumers. But that's a problem with the essay because it does talk about the trends of consumers being less influenced and then doesn't mention the whether it's good for those consumers. It seems illogical to say, well, people are less influenced by advertising, but not talk about whether that is good for those people, for those people who are now less influenced by advertising than people in the past and just focusing on the... Um, the change in terms of how it affects the advertising companies. So I'm going to still keep this, even though it's not addressed in the essay, because I think it would just be too weird to talk about um, how consumer attitudes are changing and then not talk about... Uh, whether it's positive or negative for the consumers themselves. Hopefully that makes sense. So obviously you can't just jump in with a list. Uh, it's completely the wrong style. Um, I know I don't need to explain that, but I'll just give you an example of how you write a full topic sentence to introduce the paragraph. So ultimately there are three main reasons For this, so I have three main reasons why people are becoming more and more, so increasingly resistant or impervious. I'll try and show off with some fancy words to the persuasive power or the traditionally persuasive power. of advertising, the historically persuasive ad persuasive power of advertising, which is perhaps becoming less, uh, less powerful over time, their, uh, their power to persuade people, to persuade consumers. Uh, you can't just put a number one. So first, let's just say modern society has an oversaturation of advertising. And then actually the rest is is pretty good in terms of the writing. Um, if you say ad or advert, the short form, it's an abbreviation. It's a little bit informal, but I can understand why uh, the writer doesn't want to just keep repeating the words advertisement. Although 
honestly, the word advertisement isn't used that much. It's just the word advertising that is used uh, again and again. So to change that, I would not personally use the word ads. I would say advertisements. I would use the full word because it sounds more formal. It's more appropriate style. But I can understand why people don't want to repeat the same words. So I won't make a, a big deal out of that. So many consumers are bombarded with advertisements from multiple sources throughout the day, um, such as social media, TV, radio, billboards, and more. I mean, that's that's actually pretty good writing. So yeah, on social media, on TV, these are the uh, the places where they see the advertisements. So the advertisements are from these these sources. I mean, maybe various kinds of media would be a better way of talking about these, but it still makes sense, so I'm going to leave it. With so many advertisements competing for our attention, or let's say their attention, because we've got the word consumers next. Consumers may become desensitized. Um, Obviously, the spelling is wrong, but the word is good. Desensitized. Or overwhelmed, leading to less impact on their behavior. So less impact on their, I would maybe say, consumer choices. But again, it's, it's fine the way it is. Just maybe make it a bit more specific. Uh, and again, yeah, you can't just start with the number two. Let's say second, there is growing or there is a growing distrust of advertising among the public. Some consumers are skeptical of advertising and see it as a tool used by companies to manipulate or deceive them. Yep, that's good writing. They may also be aware of the various tactics used in advertising, such as uh, hyperbole or false promises, which can de decrease their trust in the messages. Maybe in the products and services being advertised would be better than messages. And maybe it would be slightly better to, again, highlight that it's kind of something that's happening more and more. It's a change. Not just some consumers are skeptical, but increasing numbers of consumers are skeptical. And maybe talk about where that greater awareness comes from. Why are people more aware today? So I won't talk about the rest of this paragraph, but again, it's the same, uh, the same issues as before. Slightly informal at times and the wrong style. So the final paragraph overall, whether this trend of consumers being less influenced by advertising is positive or negative overall is a matter of perspective. In fact, I think I'll add the word overall because it can have positive and negative aspects, but we're thinking of the, uh, the overall assessment. On one hand, what well, we say on the one hand, usually, on the one hand, it can be seen as a positive development because it forces companies to find more creative and authentic ways to create connect with consumers. On the other hand, it may be negative for companies that rely heavily on traditional advertising methods and may struggle to adapt to the changing landscape. Does this use nice words? Is the grammar uh, impressive? Yes, it is um, on both of those counts. But stylistically... Um, Well, in terms of the format, I should say, there's no clear conclusion. I can see that it's trying to um, address this point and use it as a conclusion. But um, arguing that it's neutral, so neither a positive or negative development, 
but um, one which may be positive or negative is not really a satisfying conclusion because it's only focusing on the effects on companies, as I said, whereas the previous uh, paragraph is focusing on consumers who um, have this kind of fatigue from constant advertising that uh, constant advertisements which are bombarding them from various sources. They're kind of inundated in advertisements um, throughout their day. Advertisements are inescapable. They're kind of distrusting these um, because they feel that they are manipulative, for example. So to then focus only on the the industry perspective it does seem a bit odd um i feel it would be better to maybe consider the consumer and the advertising industry because that would kind of tie everything together very neatly you know we've been talking about the consumers a lot it seems wrong to suddenly switch from the consumer point of view to the uh, to the business point of view um, and not kind of tie them together. So possibly positive development for consumers who are frankly exhausted from the constant bombardment of advertising, possibly negative for certain companies but beneficial for big companies uh, in the long term perhaps so this was such an unusual essay i mean i i very rarely see things like this where someone has just misunderstood completely the style of an academic essay um or maybe maybe format is a better word than style because uh, the register of the language is not informal or anything like that. But yeah, it's more like a report, isn't it, than um, a typical academic essay with um, with subheadings. You know, that's not what you're going to do in this kind of essay. So it was actually quite hard to score for me. Um, what I came up with was overall 5.5. That would be the average um, for 6, 7, 5, and 5. Because it would be rounded down, not rounded up. It wouldn't be rounded up to the, to the higher number. It would be rounded down to the lower number. So that would be the overall. So why? Uh, well, we can start with the grammar because that's the first one. Seven for grammar, uses a variety of complex sentences, frequent error-free sentences. Yes, but um, good control of grammar and punctuation, if you're not writing in a full sentence like here, I think that's kind of a big problem. Um, so even though the following grammar is very good, it would be wrong, I think, to give this a seven when the writer is doing this. Yeah, you must write in full grammatically correct sentences at all times. So that's why I end up with the, um, the six in this case. I think communication is... Um, is rarely reduced by the fact that full sentences aren't being used. But good control of grammar, if you're not writing in full sentences, I, I, I don't think you can say so. So six. Uh, vocabulary, it's actually not vocabulary, sorry, it's lexical resource. But um, that, that includes, you know, um, vocabulary and word choice and how words go together. So just for convenience, we've got that word there. Uh, I actually gave this a seven because I thought it was very good. Um, 
the idea, for example, of being uh, bombarded with advertisements. This word is frequently used with this word in English. Uh, words desensitized, overwhelmed. Obviously, it was misspelled, but I knew what was meant. Skeptical is good. Various tactics, hyperbole, lots of very nice language, manipulative. Um, they need to find more creative and authentic ways to connect with consumers. It was, it was nice. Um, so overall, sufficient range of vocabulary to allow some flexibility and precision. Absolutely. Awareness of style and collocation, you know, bombarded with advertisements is a nice collocation. Occasional errors in word choice, spelling and word formation. Yeah. I mean, certainly not an eight because, um, Again, I thought meanings could be more precise uh, rather than behavior. You know, consumer choices, for example, would be more precise. Um, and then the weaker points, cohesion and coherence and task achievement. So cohesion and coherence um, is how you kind of have the, uh, the, the overall progression and how you sequence the ideas and information involves skillful paragraphing. Obviously, we don't really have... Uh, skillful paragraphing, there's no neat conclusion. Um, there's the unusual style with the headings. So, um, uses paragraphing, but not always logically. I mean, there, there was paragraphing, there was a kind of progression, but uh, the reason I chose five was that... Um, I felt there was a lack of overall progression and um, there were some inadequate cohesive devices uh, because of the, well, the cohesive devices, the problem was the, the, uh, the, the subheadings there and the, um, the problems with organization um, Again, that's not how you organize the writing, so that would uh, that would limit it to a five, I think. Lack of overall progression, I thought, was also a problem because of what we uh, what we said previously. Um, there's no introductory paragraph, so I had to add all this stuff to make a clear argument that's going to be argued. Uh, then there's a huge focus on consumers and the reasons why consumers are becoming more impervious or inured to the power that advertising has historically had on consumers. And then we suddenly switched to focusing on the, uh, the businesses and how companies um, and the advertising industry will have to change. And there's no overall conclusion that ties it all together, just like in the introduction, it's not all tied together, talking about, um, you know, we're exposed to advertisements in different ways and we react, we react to them differently for various reasons. And um, we can think of it in terms of how it affects the consumers and, uh, and the business world and the advertising industry. That's not ever stated it's just, it seems very sudden changing from the focus on consumers and their changing attitudes to talking about um, how, the, uh, how the businesses are affected in terms of their, their money-making capacity, I suppose. So, yeah, th I, th I thought there were quite significant issues with the coherence and cohesion and, again, for the, uh, for the task response. Um, for similar reasons, there may be no conclusion drawn, uh, main ideas, but limited and not sufficiently developed, irrelevant detail. I, mean, I thought the ideas were generally good, um, needed more development because, um, not talking about whether it's positive or negative for consumers. Um, so it does need development, but kind of not really limited main ideas 
it, here, certainly. It's just how they're presented, which is the problem. And um, for me, the main issue was uh, no conclusions drawn. Uh, I was expecting another paragraph when I first saw this, uh, a separate conclusion paragraph. So my assumption was introduction. This could be the first body paragraph. This could be the second and final body paragraph. And the fourth paragraph could be the conclusion. But as it is, we have the introduction. We do have this as the first body paragraph. We do have this as the second body paragraph. But the second body paragraph is also being used or the writer is attempting to use it as a conclusion and it doesn't really work unfortunately so that's what i ended up with i'm curious if your predictions were similar to the ones that i i reached so as always thank you for watching and thank you for listening and please feel free to write comments or ask any questions by commenting on this video thank you very much